In our gospel reading for today, we hear Jesus calling us to follow, calling the disciples to follow him, calling us to follow him. But first, to be a follower of Jesus, we have to understand who Jesus is. And so Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say I am? You see, in that time and in that place, a person's value in the society was, was given by how people understood their role, how people defined who they were and, and how they contributed to society. So this was not an unusual question for Jesus to ask. Who do people say that I am? Who do you say that Jesus is? Savior? God? Creator. Creator. Healer. Protector. Say again. Prince of Peace. Lots and lots of adjectives can be used to define who Jesus is in our lives. And I suspect that at different times along our life journey, we would identify Jesus in different ways, depending on our need depending on our, how we're feeling about that relationship that he has with us, what we're relying on for, from him, would help us shape how we identify who Jesus is for us and how Jesus works in our lives. Peter said to Jesus, you are the Messiah. Identifying him with the right label, Jesus as the anointed one, but not quite understanding what that means for Jesus. For you see, when Jesus goes on to tell his disciples what it means to be the anointed Messiah of God, he tells them that he will, he's going to suffer. He's going to be rejected. He's going to be killed. And he's going to raise, be raised. Peter doesn't like that definition. And so what does Peter do? He fusses at Jesus. He argues. No way, Jesus. That's not what's going to happen to you. We're going to follow you. We're going to be there for you. And we're going to conquer the world in your name, Jesus. That's the kind of Messiah that the people were expecting. Someone who would come along and take care of the, of the persecutors and the oppression. Who would be the anointed king who would rule over all the land and would take care of their every need. So they were disappointed when Jesus describes his life as the Messiah. One who suffers, is rejected, is killed, and will be raised. Peter doesn't like it. So he argues with Jesus. And what does Jesus do back with Peter? Get behind me, Satan. What a harsh word. The word Satan here is best understood not as, a, as an evil spirit or, or a, a personified as, as some kind of evil in the world, but rather as an adversary. Peter being the adversary, the one who's going to fight against Jesus, the one who's going to cling to him and not let him do what it is that he's been called to do. And so Jesus rebukes him. And then Jesus goes on to explain what it is. Suffering, being killed, being raised. You see, to follow Jesus is to walk along that same path. Jesus says to the disciples and to us, if any want to become my disciples, did you pick up on what you have to do to be a disciple of Jesus? a follower, a student of Jesus, deny themselves. <coughs> Suffer. Be rejected. Deny themselves. Take up your cross. Now when Jesus says this, he's not speaking of, of the minor irritations that come our way 
of the little, if you remember the storybook, the princess and the pea, the little irritant under the mattress, the little thorn in our side. Jesus is not speaking of the little things that come our way. While they are big for us, they are but minuscule in the scheme of things. For Jesus is saying, take up your cross. Take up the burdens of denying yourself. And along the way, as you deny yourself, as you stand up for the good of others, as you stand up against oppression and persecution, as you face the challenges that come your way, denying yourself shapes our lives. Say no to things that come between us and God. Say no to things that come between us and each other. Say no to the whims of our lives so that we too follow Jesus. So if any want to become his disciples, we must first deny ourselves, take up our cross, and then follow. Now where is Jesus going? To the cross. Jesus is headed to Jerusalem. Three times in the Gospel of Mark, he tells his disciples where they're going. We're going to Jerusalem where I will suffer, be rejected, be killed, and after three days be raised. You see, that's what it means to follow Jesus, is to go where he goes, to live as he lived, caring for the forsaken and the lost and the hurt of the world, caring for those on the margins, breaking down barriers so that all have relationship with the one who loves us. My sisters and brothers, that too describes our own lives of faith, for we are called to follow. We sang in our call to worship, step by step, y'all lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Do we mean it? Do we mean it? If following Jesus is about suffering, rejection, being killed, and then being raised. Do we mean it when we say, yes, Jesus, I'll go? For following Jesus means living as Jesus lived. Loving as Jesus loved. Dying as Jesus died. That is the shape of our lives. That is the shape of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. It's not an easy road that we go. We're not promised that life will be easy. Instead, we're promised that life is going to be hard. For Jesus just said, if you want to follow me, you have to go where I go, and where I go is to the cross. So why are we surprised when life is a little hard? For we've heard that message. The good news is, is that we are not left alone. That after three days, we will be raised in the power and glory of God. That after we have suffered that after we have been killed and rejected, we will raise. For we have been washed in the waters of baptism. We have been clothed with Christ. We have died as he have died, and we have, will be raised as he was raised. We know the end of the story for us. And while life is hard, and there are many things that we don't understand, and many places where we are called to go that we don't want to go, Many things that we're asked to do that we don't want to do. We know the end of the story. And the end of the story is that we will be raised with God. That we share in that resurrection. Just as all those who have gone before us in the faith. And so we're given the perseverance. The guidance of the Holy Spirit who washes over us. We're given that assurance to hold on to, to cling to, to trust in, 
to gather hope from. The prophet Isaiah talks about what it is to be that kind of suffering servant as he speaks of turning his back to those who hurt him, giving his cheek to those who pull out the beard. I don't know, I don't have a beard, but I suspect that'd be pretty hard. Go ahead, pull it again. You know, go ahead, hit me on this side. Those are the shape of life. And yet this same prophet says, the Lord helps me. The Lord helps us. The Lord helps you and the Lord helps me. So that we, when we are faced with the struggles, as we follow Jesus into the unknown, knowing that the promise of God is certain and true, and that after three days, we too will be raised to the glory of the Father. That is the hope by which we stand and the promise on which we claim. Thanks be to God.